Sunset Strip in Los Angeles, all the way to Las Vegas, here on Las Vegas Boulevard. And they had a couple stops along the way. They had an Oscar. They had a Grammy. They had an Emmy. And they also had enough time to become a member of Congress. They need no introduction. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'll give them one. Sonny and Cher! Are we on? Are we working? Okay, you ready, Sonny? I think I am. Okay, there we go. Maybe. <laughs> it's hard to follow Dean Martin, you all know that.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Could we also get a round of applause for Cher? <laughs> did you feel it? Did you feel it when we came in? Did you feel the excitement in the crowd? I, I did. I did. I felt the excitement. Yeah. 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 Did yeah. you? <laughs> I did. I felt the excitement. You're thinking, when will it ever yeah. end? No, let me check this here. <laughs> Sunny? <laughs> no, I ain't this work. Okay, we're going to bring Chance to the end. Yeah, it's really great. You know, the excitement, it was spine tingling. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it just goes on and on. When and you... share, and share. Yes, yes, Sunny. When does the excitement ever end? Uh, when you come on stage. Oh, that doesn't seem right, but, uh... Yeah. Yeah, but share, share, sh share. Yes. <laughs> share. Yeah, you want some respect? Is that what you're asking me? Share, when are you ever going to provide a compliment to the Italian? Oh, all right. Dean Martin, you are groovy. <laughs> Woo! Hit it, John. Unbelievable. Our next song is the first song we wrote together in 1964. Baby, don't go. Pretty baby.
Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention please? Las Vegas is a magical city. Vegas is known for great entertainment and fabulous magic shows. You have all heard of the great Houdini. Well, tonight we have the almost great Huzwini. We also have his twin brother, who is a mind reader, or prefers to be called a mentalist. You may have also heard of the amazing Kreskin. Well, tonight we have the unbelievable Foreskin. So please welcome to the stage our first act, the great Uzwini. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Say hello to Mercedes. Mercedes will be my assistant this evening. I actually once dated a showgirl. Her name was Portia. I couldn't afford her either. Well, we're kind of off the strip. The big magic shows on the strip have grand illusion. Grand illusion would be sawing a lady in half, making a helicopter appear or disappear, or we're a little bit low budget. So we're going to use some basic props. Now we can't do a magic show without a magic wand. Mercedes, can you grab the magic wand? <laughs> I think that one may need a little blue pill. <laughs> so as I said, we're going to do a basic magic trick. Mercedes is going to help me. And I'm going to use a rope. This is a small rope. And I have a medium size rope. and a long rope. So I'm going to put all these ends together. We're going to make these ends all the same size. Now if you could see that, As I said, we made all these ropes the same size. You're skeptical, I can see. Mercedes, can you blow on the ropes? All the same size. Now that's actually the easy part. The difficult part is to actually make them come back to their original size. So Mercedes, could you help me restore these? And I think the best way to do that is to shake them up a little bit. That has nothing to do with the act. That, that's for my own entertainment. So let's look inside the hat. The small piece of rope. The medium piece of rope. And the long piece of rope restored. Nothing else in the hat. I think that's enough of magic. So we heard the announcement initially, and what was happening there was uh, we had two. I actually have a twin brother. And my twin brother is going to come out 
and do mind reading. So let me go find him. <laughs> Give it up for my brother, the great Queen Queen. Good. Mediocre job. <laughs> Well, in the art of magic, there's also mentalism. Fancy word for reading someone's mind. So I'm going to start with my assistant, the lovely Mercedes. Concentrate. I'm going to read your mind. Mercedes, this is a rated G program. <laughs> G as in geriatric. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to ask for a volunteer from the audience, mainly looking for a, a male, a gentleman. So we'll pick a gentleman. Lights, thank you. Uh, Mercedes, can you escort the gentleman up? Now, why Mercedes is getting the gentleman, the observant people will notice these sealed envelopes have been on stage, non-altered, for the entire show. So I'm going to put those here. We have a vic I mean a volunteer. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Your name is? Jerry. Jerry, nice to meet you. And originally, where, where are you from, Jerry? Minnesota. I knew that. <laughs> so what we're going to do is, I'm sure you go grocery shopping. So what we want to do is, in the grocery store, there's thousands and thousands of items. And I made a prediction of what item you will pick out. So let's imagine, do an imagination. We're going to narrow this down to the cereal aisle. And you'll be walking down the cereal aisle uh, mentally. And in the cereal aisle, you'll see Fruit Loops, Lucky Charms, Corn Pop, but well, Corn Pop was a bad dude, but I digress. <laughs> Please do not pick weeds. The reason why is back in 1976, Bruce Jenner won the decathlon. They put his picture on the box of weeds. He has eaten weeds every day for 30 years. And look what happened to him. <laughs> So I'll ask you to walk down that aisle, pick up a box of cereal in, in your mind, show the audience the box of cereal, and tell them out loud, what was your selection? Tell them mentally. No, tell them physically, I mean, not, or orally, <laughs> verbally, verbally. Tell them verbally, you're allowed to tell them what you selected. Kashi Raisin Bran. You're over 40, aren't you? <laughs> Wouldn't it be amazing if in this envelope I had Kashi Raisin Bran? Wouldn't it be kind of amazing? I think so too. The UPC code. Raisin Bran. <laughs> well, you've been a big help. And uh, you can go back to your... 
I, th I think you're glad to go back to your table there. <laughs> now I think we'll need another volunteer. This time probably a, a woman, and uh, Mercedes will seek out the woman. And actually someone that uses the pronouns she or her. <laughs> I prefer to say a lady. Your name is Judy. Judy. Um, the great. I'm uh, sorry. <laughs> I am the unbelievable foreskin. So nice to meet you, Judy. And where are you from? Michigan. Well, welcome. We appreciate your help today. So a little bit different. We're going to move away from the grocery store, and I'm going to ask you to think about someone everybody knows. It could be a living or deceased. It could be a singer or a movie star, male or female. So think about it. Give a little bit of time. And verbally, would you tell the audience who you thought about? You could yell that out. Robert Redford. Robert Redford. Once again, would it be amazing in it if in this envelope I had a photograph of Robert Redford? Robert Richards <laughs> as a baby. Thank you, Judy. Michael Jackson as a baby. Thank you, you've been great. <laughs>
fever all through the night Sun lights up the daytime Moon lights up the night I light up when you call my name And you know I'm gonna treat you right Everybody's got the fever That is something you all know Fever isn't just a new thing Fever started long ago Romeo loved Juliet Juliet, she felt the same when he put his arms around her, he said, Julie, baby, you're my flame, thou give it fever. When we kiss it, fever with thy flame in youth. Fever, I'm a fire, fever, yeah, I burn for sooth. She said, Daddy, oh, don't you dare, he gives me fever. With his kisses, fever really holds me tight. Fever, I was missus, Daddy, won't you treat him right? Now you've listened to a story, here's the point that I have made. Chicks were born to give you fever, be it there and I don't sin the great, they give you fever. When you kiss them, fever if you live and learn. Fever, till you sizzle, what a lovely way to burn. What a lovely way to burn. What a lovely way to burn. What lovely way to burn. Thank you, thank you. This next song I wrote with Dave Barber, and he was my first husband. I've had four of them, you know. Anyway, I was a singer, and he was a musician with the Benny Goodman Orchestra. I knew I was in love the minute I heard him play that guitar. Mm, mm, mm. But, unfortunately, he got fired for fraternizing with the singer. So I quit, and we got married. And it was a good day. 